And he saved Maya and Itai Regev, two brothers. With Baruch Hashem, after 53 days, they coming back to his parents, to his family. And I'm very happy for this chus for my son. And I think that Lekabel Yisurim Yisurim Be'ahava is a mitzvah. And the Ramban says that the Kodesh Bochul don't send an Isoyan for somebody if he cannot respect it. Why is it that when you're going through a difficult time, you see Hashem more? Because I say to people that a lot of people from Israel, after the Simchas Torah, we want to see the horrors, Zvaot. I want to see only the Nisim. Welcome to History for the Curious. I'm Mena Reisner, and I host the internationally renowned lecturer, dynamic historian, and tour guide, Rabbi Aubrey Hirsch. Experience our history, confront dilemmas, and reveal the untold stories of 3,000 years of Jewish heritage, from Paris to Cairo, from the Russian Tsar to Maimonides, and from the Sinai Revelation to the French Revolution. Join the fastest growing Jewish history podcast in the world by subscribing to this channel and discovering the events that have shaped us into who we are today. We are honored to welcome to the studio El Khanan Danino. El Khanan's son was kidnapped by Hamas terrorists on the 7th of October on Simchas Torah, 114 days ago. And he has been since a beacon of light and positivity in this incredibly dark and difficult time that he's been facing. We've covered the war quite extensively with these podcasts with the goal of educating, but more importantly, to learn from. Davening and Amuna, as Rabbi Hesh, you said in the very first episode, are the two things that are required from every Jew when other Jews are in pain, specifically, wherever they are. And there's no better person to speak to us than Elchanan, someone who has and is suffering immeasurable pain. And yet, his Amuna is rock solid and has only strengthened throughout his ordeal. Elchanan, we're old friends. You worked around the corner from where I lived, and I used to see you a few times a week. And tragedy generally hits home harder when it affects people who you personally know. Although, of course, we should always strive to get to a place where we feel close enough to all Jews around the world that one is affected equally no matter who is suffering. It's painful that we meet again under these circumstances and not um, smiling and laughing as we used to, but Bezrat Hashem. We'll be hearing good news soon, and this nightmare will be over. So, Hanan, thank you so much for coming, especially from Israel. And we are honored that you took your time to come to the studio for us. And can we just start at the beginning by asking, what happened? How did you find out? We know that your son is in Gaza now. How did this whole thing begin for you? It's beginning in Simchas Torah. Afternoon, four people coming in my house and told me that they don't find it, my son, Ori. And I asked him how it's possible that they don't find him. They told me, you're a religion man, and you don't have TV, you don't see TV, you don't hear the radio, you don't have a phone, a mobile phone, and you don't know that in uh, near Gaza, a hundred people is killed, and a hundred people hostage. And we don't know where is your son. After that, four days, nobody coming to tell us where is Ori. If he's alive, if he's dead, Shalom. And only in uh, after four days, uh, the army coming and say, still we don't know where is he. After Two weeks, I think, they told me that they have a small information that is hostage to Gaza, and they don't know if he's in life, if he's dead. The last information that we have, it's from October 13, that's Bo Hashem is in life. But they don't know if it's in healthy or not. 
We pray from Kodesh Baruch every day that it's healthy and life. Bezrat Hashem. Bacholon, when I met you in Yerushalayim a few weeks ago, you told me that they saw on CCTV that your son had already driven away and he was, so to speak, safe. And he came back and he picked up three other people. All four became hostages, but two of them have now been released. And it's likely, therefore, that he saved the lives of at least these two, perhaps all three. How does that make you feel about your son? I know my son, Ori. This story, it's the story of the life of my son. My son, from 18 years old, is have the havta l'reacha kamocha. Always he make first for the other people. After that, he make for himself. And this story, for me, it's big schut for my son that kol hamatzil nefesh achas mi Yisrael ke'ilu kiem olam ale. And he saved Maya and Itai Regev, two brothers. But Baruch Hashem, after 53 days, they coming back to his parents, to his family. And I'm very happy for this chus for my son. So how does that make you feel when you saw them being released and you know that your son is still in there and probably because of them taking the other two and then being released. How does that make you feel? Kodesh Baruch Hu gave me this Nisayan. And I think one of the mitzvah, I'm a part of from Klal Am Yisrael. And I think that Lekabel Yisurim Be'ahava is a mitzvah. And the Ramban says that the Kodesh Baruch Hu don't send a Nisayan for somebody if he cannot respect it. In other words, if he gets a trial, he is able to find the inner strength to overcome it. Otherwise, Hashem wouldn't send it to him. Yeah. If Hashem sent me this Nisoyan, my job is to get Yisurim Be'ava. It's really Yisurim. Every day, every night, every moment that I don't know what's happened with my son, it's very, very, very hard for me, for my family. But the emuna give me the power and strong for the next moment. I have the responsibility for my family. And I must to be stronger and I must to be healthy for them. I say for my son, I say for my son, I want to be stronger and healthy when my son Hori come back. Like Arab Simchaster. Like one day before. I don't want to be another man, another father when he's come back. You led me on to my next question, which you've almost answered, but I'm going to ask it again. We do Jewish history on the podcast and we see through history that the Jewish people, at the most difficult times, that's when their emunah comes out. That's when suddenly they see God clearer than they ever saw him before. And I'm wondering why. In other words, the logic should be that when Hashem hides his face, when you don't see him, in other words, when people are suffering, that's when you feel he's not there. But it seems, and you definitely are, are a proof of this, you know, we've known each other for many years, and you're speaking about Hashem all day now. He's everywhere in your life. And this should be the time, maybe, when you don't see Him as much. Why is it, although you answered it before, but maybe just speak more about the point, why is it that when you're going through a difficult time, you see Hashem more? Because I say to people that a lot of people from Am Yisrael, after the Simchastere, he wanted to see the 
הורס, זוועות. I want to see only the Nisim. I don't look of the horrors. I look only of the Nisim. It's one big ness that is finished in 1,500 murder. That's terrible, yeah. 1,500, it's terrible. But in the way of the Teva, they can go to Ashdod, go to Ashkelon, go to Be'er Sheva, and Hashem Yerachim, what's happened. In other words, it could have been much, much worse, you're saying? Yeah, and I want to see that it's Ness. And this gives me the power. It opened my eyes to see the Kodesh Borhu every moment. Also today, I'm here and I speak Emune. I try to speak only Emune. And Baruch Hashem, I see the Kodesh Borhu give me the power in every place when I go. I receive a lot of Chizuk here in London, in Paris, in Hungary, in Romania. Baruch Hashem, Am Yisrael in every place in the world. Pray for a whole of stage, with me, without me. And this gives me Chizuk to continue. And like you explained, that sort of strength doesn't make sense because usually you would be overwhelmed by the tzara, by the pain. But you still have the ability to see the goodness in everything, which is lobada chateva. It's hard to understand. Until Sim Chastoyer, nothing is there chateva. Six or seven hours, nobody in Israel saw the Palestinian coming inside Israel. It's Hester Ponim. Absolutely a stoponym. Nobody can explain it. I don't understand somebody who cannot see the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Mamesh Bechush in this war. In other words, the war has brought people, you think, in Eretz Yisrael, secular and religious, to a more direct contact with the emuna of Hashem because it was so powerful and because it was so unnatural? Sure. You hear the story from, uh, from people in, uh, in Kfar Aza that's absolutely not religious, yeah? And his story, he said that uh, he said to heal him for the first time in, the, in his life. He said, Shila Ma'alot, she don't know From where is he remembered that? We see face to face the connect from a Jew in Kfar Aza to the Kodesh Baruch Hu. The Neshama wakens up. Yeah. Nobody know. She's not religion. Nothing. But the connect, it's in every Jewish in the world. So that's very powerful. You could say even in the most tragic, illogical times, because it's so not natural and the rest of the world, like you said, how could they have broken in with the best army, the best intelligence? Instead of looking so much at that point, you would say it's obviously God given. We don't understand why, but Hashem wanted it to happen because it makes no sense. Wow. When you daven to Hashem, and I'm obviously you daven three times a day, but going through this, you must be daveling throughout the day. What are you praying for? What do you ask of Hashem? In every moment, in every day, when I wake up, I say, Moi de ani lefonecho, melechai vekayo. Shechazarto binishmosi, bechem lo rabo, emunosecho. To be in my emune, it's chem lo rabo. Hashem give me in chem lo rabo, my emune. Great mercy. And I ask to the Kodesh Borchu, I'm human, a human. Ben Adam, and I ask the Kodesh Baruch Hu, I want to cry, but I cannot in every moment to cry. It's not healthy, it's not good. I cry three times in the day. Every Shema Koyleinu in Shemona Esri, I cry to the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Please help the 136 
people and my son between the hay to go out immediately from there. But together, I asked to the Kodesh Bochum, give me the Rishus to cry only three times a day, and the rest of the day, please give me the power and the strength to be healthy and normally. If your son could hear this now, which is a miracle in Gaza, but let's say you could speak directly to him and you know he's listening. What would you say to Uri now? Uri, my dear son, I want to know that every place that I go in the 114 days I go to Hungary, to Romania, to Ukraine, to Paris, London, every place I see that all Am Israel in every place in the world is with you. Pray for you. Pray for the area friend of you that is in Gaza. Stay strong and believe in the Kodesh Bochu that in the next moment you go out from there. Ki Yeshua Hashem care fine. Hashem's salvation can happen in a moment, momentarily. In the next moment. How do you cope? This is a question for anyone going through something that takes time. If you believe strongly, Yeshua Tashem Karafayan, that even if a sword is on the neck, you never stop praying. How do you cope with a disappointment? With the next day, when he's not released, or when you don't hear news, and then you go to bed again with the same feeling, but then you wake up and you want to believe again that it can happen at any stage and then another day passes and it's ready so many days have passed how do you keep that fresh that belief that everything can change suddenly Baruch Hashem Kosh send me you and other people and Rabbi Hober Hirsch and I can speak Emune here in schools, this give me the koyach, the power for the next day, for the next moment. Because I see the faces of the people who hear me, I feel that they really partners of our trouble. And I feel mamash, kol Israel chaverim, ve'arevim zelaze. Well, so I know you've met with the chief of staff in Israel, with Bibi Netanyahu, with the minister of defense, with many people, Shabbat, the Mossad, etc. And you've been propelled to a public position. Where do you see this going when Emet Hashem, this all will end in a positive way. Where do you see yourself as a result of this? Now I feel that Kodesh Baruch sent me a shlichus to speak emune from my heart place. But I hope that one day after the, well, my son already coming, Be'ez Hashem, I want to be Elchanan Danino from Arab Simchas Who's know me, know me. Who doesn't know me, doesn't know me. I don't want to be a famous. I don't want to be nothing. Simply man. So you've spoken in London and in a couple of shows about your grandparents. Can you tell us about it? Before that I speak for my grandfather and my grandmother, I want to thank Mr. Nusi Agar, the Baal Achnos Asorchim, here in London. Nusi and his wife make for our family very, very, very good. Mamesh Achnos Asorchim, exactly like a Romovino. Four doors open. Yeah. 
It was a beautiful event last night. It was a big uh, chizuk with singing and we davening together and you spoke. Yeah, it's one of my grandfather and my grandmother came to Israel from Morocco and they don't have money, no career, no power, nothing. But they have one thing. Emune, absolute emune in a Kaddish Baruch And I, I have one story that uh, in my vision I see that until uh, Simcha Stoyer eh? that my grandfather come I, I, can, I come back with my grandfather in uh, one day Shachis and Shul and he's go to the bakery near his uh, home and he's buy one small pita. We go to the grocery and buy one yogurt. And I ask him, Saba, it's enough for who? What is one pita, one yogurt? What's happened afternoon? What's happened night? What's happened tomorrow? Saba told me, who has given me today the power and the money to buy the pita and the yogurt, if he want, he give me the money and the power to buy tomorrow. If he don't want, don't want. Like we say, in Hashem, if Kedush Baruch want. And I was a child, little child, and I don't understand what it is. And I asked my father, what Saba mean? He told me, we have Pasuk, Tamim, and your grandfather don't think like you think that tamim it's mitzvah to believe in God it's not a mune for him all gash miut all day is to be tamim with Hashem also when he go to the grocery, also when we go to the bakery, he know the Kodesh Bochu is with him, and he's make only the thing what he think the Kodesh Bochu want or doesn't want. And for me, after 41 years, I remember this story, and this is give me the example of Emune, what I want to be. I cannot be like my grandfather and my grandmother. It's Tzadikim it's from another generation. But this is my Sheifot. Ambitions. To be like them. And at this moment, this story gave me Chizuk, a big Chizuk, to be closer to HaKadosh Baruch and to be ma'amin be'emuna shalemu. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with me, with my family, in every moment. Wow. It shows also the power of chinuch, of education, that your grandfather so many years ago could say one line, and after many decades, many, many years, his grandson is going through such a nightmare and has the strength from that. So talking about that in your position, what can you tell the listeners around the world? Most of our listeners are not in Israel. They're in America, they're in England, they're in Europe. And we have listeners in Israel too. But for people who are a bit further away from Eretz Israel and definitely far away from what you are experiencing, what should people do? People are going to hear this and this touches a raw nerve of every Jew around the world. What should people do? I ask from every Jewish in the world, we have three times in a day, pray Shmon Esri. In the second bracha we say, Mechalkel chayim bechesed, Mechayim meisim berachamim rabim, Soy mechnoiflim veroi fechoilim umati rasurim. He releases those who are bound, mati rasurim. And we know the Allah has say that person, we cannot ask from the Kodesh Bochum in the three first brachas, we cannot ask personally bakashot. And I asked two boys came from Earth as well, how I can pray for my son. 
the brokers say, Umatir Asurim, my son is in Gaza. I cannot pray from the, to the Kodesh Borchu for my son. It's told me if your son is himself there, you cannot. But now that we have so many hostages in Gaza, and it is trouble, big trouble from Klal Israel, we can pray and we can mechaven in Matir Asurim for one hundred and thirty six people that hostess in Gaza. Please pray for them. In every Shmona Esre, Matir Asurim, take a few seconds to mechaven from all hostage. And my son, Ori Ben Einav, and Be'ezrat Hashem, every moment we believe in the next moment, Be'ezrat Hashem will come back. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, this is a more of an intellectual podcast. It's educational, and we've spoken about Tzvila, we've spoken about Amun Abitochen, but to feel it, I'm hoping the listeners can feel what we have, myself and Rabbi Hirsch, in this room. And I just want to thank you. Thank you for opening your heart to us, to our listeners, and to allow us to see what you're going through, and more importantly, how you are coping with it, and how you are educating the world and uh, listening to you, it's not like listening to us. It's a responsibility, the Mechayev. And it uh, shows all of us what the power of the Jewish people are and how we can cope with anything. And the next time you'll be here in the studio, we'll be with Uri and we'll be celebrating. Be'ezrat Hashem, Be'korev Mamish. Be'ezrat Hashem, thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Rabbi Hesh.